I don't know if you've seen the headlines, but we're beginning to get uh, an indication that the Greeks aren't maybe prepared to go as far, as far as some in Berlin uh, and Frankfurt and Brussels had hoped that they would. I, how, how critical are the next 12 hours, do you think, 12 to 24 hours? And how big a chance is there for a misstep here? I think we are really setting up for another cliffhanger on that one and uh, there seems to be some misperception on both ends. Um, I think in Germany and in other countries of the Eurozone the perception was that the Greek government might have understood the message. Now over the weekend we already heard that the Greek government claimed that they won the battle and I think uh, with the proposals we have heard so far I think uh, we will have another issue and I think it's far from clear that that will be waved through in uh, Tuesday at the finance minister's uh, press conference, uh, telephone conference. Um, Stefan, what exactly are we expecting in terms of, uh, of reforms? We're very thin on the details, and of course everything will be in the details, but we know they're sticking to the minimum wage increase. We know that they're sticking to some um, you know, plans to actually protect foreclosures. For the moment, your sense is what? That, that it's going to be very tough for them to deliver the reforms that the EU wants to see? Yes, of course. I mean, ultimately, the issue is not so much the Greek debt, it's the competitiveness of Greece. And obviously, those measures uh, will basically not help the uh, Greece to become, com become competitive, and therefore, it might erode the whole basis for the deal. Stefan, you are Deutsche Bank's chief international economist. You have your ear to the ground. Um, what are people saying in Germany? Uh, in terms of policymakers, about whether or not actually this talk that Germany is is willing to see Greece go, how realistic is that? Is that really the the sort of the core view? I mean, ultimately, I mean, obviously, there is a lot of posturing still going on from both sides, so it's very hard to tell. But um, I think that basically the patience of the German government is, is wearing thin and th that, of course, they are confident that the knock-on effects of a Grexit will be less than maybe two, three years ago. So I think uh, there is obviously some genuine uh, kind of option that if it doesn't work out ultimately that the Grexit is no longer something which can be uh, missed completely. Stefan, is, you know, I know you seem to suggest that basically the, the next two days are going to be crunch time. Um, will we be clear tomorrow on whether Greece, Greece passes through or not? Is there a danger that actually they'll have you know, these reforms and then in, in the next couple of weeks they'll go back on it or that this government will actually fall in Greece? I mean, if we look at the pattern which is evolving here, which actually has been uh, there for the last three or four years, I mean, independent almost of which government was in charge, I think it's, it's still an ongoing horse trade. And the vagueness of the Greek proposals obviously give an indication that that will continue. So I think we might see some further uh, requests from the European institutions to clarify, uh, to, to improve. and this basically horse trade will probably drag on for the next few weeks. So I can I ask you a more technical question? If we were to see the primary surplus being reduced down to say one and a half percent for Greece, would that necessarily entail a debt restructuring at the same time? Because there seems to be a view that the two might have to go hand in hand. No, I don't, I don't see that, and I think the German government is not seeing that either. It just means that uh, the path of the debt levels coming down will be pushed further into the future, um, but it uh, doesn't mean that uh, the Greek government will not have uh, the opportunity to repay this part of the debt, which is only a minor one, uh, which is coming up in the next few months. So I think that was probably uh, a non-starter to begin with, that the Greek government yeah. thought that it could uh, negotiate it debt repayment. I, I was just wondering on a more, more longer term basis, I, there, there, there is an argument that says that you, because, there, because the, the, most of the debt is held in government hands at the moment and that debt is not carrying a coupon payment attached to it, that if when that coupon comes back in you need to have a big enough cushion on the primary surplus to be able to, to manage that whether or not there is a view at the moment in the long term whether or not a one and a half primary surplus is, is viable given the fact that, that, that payment, those payments have yet to kick in. I think we are already 
pretty sure that if the uh, proceedings uh, currently don't fall apart, that there will be a, a third program. I mean, Greece has already requested that, and I think in this program we'll be taking care of that issues. And I think ultimately, in the in the in the very long term, I think um, there is not uh, high hopes that uh, Greece will uh, repay all of its debt which it owes to the European institutions. So I think in the medium term uh, there will be some negotiations on that one, but it's just putting the cart in front of the horse uh, to negotiate before the uh, critical reforms, which act actually will be the basis for a longer term Euro membership of Greece have been implemented. Stefan, what do you make of what we heard that Mr. De Guindos, the Spanish finance minister, was probably even harsher on Greece than uh, the finance minister of Germany was? Is he concerned and he's, is, he, is this a maneuver to try and stem off Podemos? Are you worried about Podemos in Spain? Yes, of course. I mean, it's, it's Podemos. And I mean, obviously, in some other countries, uh, the uh, kind of public support for austerity is not very high either, because obviously, if you have to have that for several years, it, it's not very popular with the voters. But I think it's very important uh, to see that it's not a showdown between Schäuble and Varifakis or between the German and the Greek governments. It's, a, it's basically a clash between the European institutions, which uh, insist on an agreement and the Greek government, which doesn't want to adhere to the agreement. So I, I think it's, it's, it's a very important step, and it just shows that it's not just Mr. Schäuble's, in quotation marks, stubbornness.